Marius. He made a promise to finish what he started. But as you okay, said, Cam, the... you cannot practice that. You can practice into the cardboard boxes, but the unknown was what would happen when the landing had to be stuck on the dirt and the asphalt here in Vegas. And what a relief that must be for his wife, Presley. They were married on October 25th. She was through him thick and thin last year, four months in a double back brace. There was concern if he could walk again, let alone ever get into the truck again. A year ago, he wasn't able to walk away from that attempt. And now he joins Nichelle. Now, I just saw you say, Reese, what a bummer. Yeah, pretty much, you know, um, I don't know, it all felt good. Maybe it just felt too good to, um, to do seven jumps in practice that were within two feet, no twist in the truck, no nothing. And to have that disappointment happen just then is, uh, I just can't put it into words. We saw that though, that flip was amazing. I mean, uh, yeah, it's, it's nothing. It's nothing unless you drive away. Can you explain what happened or did, did it, could you feel something different? Um, you know, the, I, I, really, I really don't know what happened. I'd have to analyze some video. Um, the speed looked right. The, the fact that it came down at, at the right angle, it just had twisted to what might felt the, the driver's side, I'm not too sure. Um, and, ah, oh, <laughs> that is, it's too much effort to fall that short. Well, the fact that you're standing here, you're good, and you're talking to us, we like that. Cam Steele, what do you think? Well, I think Reese is exactly right. It looks like he went a bit off axis, a little bit of a twist to the side as he went off, the, uh, not just as he went off the top of the ramp, but when he started to come around. Let's take a look. Execution coming in. He's trying to follow the dotted line that he has on the concrete. Pops it off the top, and it looks like maybe one wheel might have hit just a little earlier. As he drops down, you can see how the off axis isn't working. Two things are working against Reese here. Let's take a look as he goes up and hits. Hard to tell from that angle, but it looks like you can see the truck is already twisting just a bit as it goes off the top of the ramp. Everything worked perfectly, it looks like, with the ramp. And let's take a look at the top. Looks like maybe he caught it just at a bit of an angle. I can't tell for sure, but the things I'm talking about being a problem is we go on board with Reese. The rotation looked perfect. The two things that he has a problem with on the landing. Because the truck is not running when he lands, it's a carbureted truck, it stops running while he's upside down. If it was running, he might have had a chance to get on the throttle and try to drive out of it as the wheel hit. Also the rebound that we talked about, a violent hit, a violent impact, but Reese able to climb out safely. And there, the look from far back, it almost looks like the right side impacts the top just a second early. And you can see the wheels were just turned to hair. Maybe he's trying to compensate at the top. A violent roll, but the truck is designed for that. Reese Millen out, able to conquer the backflip, but not able to drive away from a disappointment. And this New Zealander, I know he'll be back to try another day. Let's go over to Joe at Paris, where Robbie still awaiting his time to jump. Well, Cam, I'll tell you, you made a good point there, talking about the 200,000 pounds of force when Reese's truck hits the ground. So he was able to make the backflip, but unable to land it and ride it out successfully. And he's such a perfectionist and the ultimate professional at what he does. And you heard him say to Nichelle that it's nothing unless you drive away. And on top of the arc is Tess Sewell, the man who designed this course and understands all the risk involved. Tess, way up there, 10 stories. Tess, what is the biggest risk, this concern with the jump up to the top of the arc? Well, normally in jumps like this, one of the biggest risks is wind. And as you can see with this anemometer, virtually no wind tonight, which is uh, a great miracle for Robbie. The biggest risk for him is not having enough speed on the up, and he strikes the front of the arch. But like we've been saying all night, though it's not for anyone to do, the up certainly seems like the easiest thing. 
infinitely tougher is going to be the drop down. If Robbie doesn't gain enough speed in the takeoff, he will fall short of his landing ramp. But if Robbie accelerates too much, he will overshoot the ramp and fall 10 stories down. Weight distribution is also critical. If Robbie leans too far forward, the bike will over rotate and send him into a forward flip. If Robbie leans too much to the rear of the bike, he will under rotate and fall backwards. All right, so we saw a lot of potential scenarios there. Tess, what's the one that really concerns you? What is most realistic that could happen with Robbie tonight? The biggest scare here is if Robbie doesn't have enough speed coming off. You can see this white line he's looking for in the carpet. If he drops too short, he's actually going to hit the flat deck, and that's going to cause him to pitch over the front. Remember, it's at least 60 feet down to go to the sweet spot here. And from the top of the arc, you can't even see the landing. Look at that Red Bull logo. That's the landing. It's barely visible. Robbie's jumping off blind. We are getting ready for 2009, just moments away as we bid 2008 farewell. Matto comes to this more prepared than ever, and what I see the difference is, Matto more focused and more tuned in than I've ever seen him before. What a showman as he wheelies down the entire length of the 200-foot run-up ramp, that in-run distance to the takeoff ramp that goes 35 feet high, 42 feet long. And now what we will see here is a few speed runs. Tess talked about that optimal speed, and he needs to get it just right. There is no room for error tonight. The bike is a Yamaha YZ250. It weighs 220 pounds. And he's hoping to take that 220 pounds and crest it at about 108 feet up in the air to get over that lift. Tess, how many speed runs do you anticipate? Well, really, it's how Robbie feels. He may do three, four, or five. You saw there, he stopped next to his mechanic, Buddy Morgan took a look at what the radar gun said. He's really now feeling it too because part of riding a motorcycle at this level is it's the noise the motorcycle makes. You know when it's going the right speed. You feel it. Robbie's trying to feel it too, but he's also wanting to check the number. So you'll see him make a few of these before he'll commit to the ramp. His parents gave him his first dirt bike and they bought him a new one every year. He's been riding since he was four and a half years old. Jumping motorcycles, you saw all the injuries that he's dealt with through the years. In fact, he made a comeback from a broken leg suffered just in May 2007. That was before that distance jump that he pulled off on last New Year's Eve. And now, Tess, we see some communication with his team, Buddy Morgan and Dane Heron. Well, Buddy looked pretty confident there. He looks happy. I mean, Buddy is the hardest working man in show business around here. He has to get that bike absolutely perfect. You have to think about the altitude. You have to think about how cold it is because it all affects the miles an hour that that bike will travel. But big smile so far on Buddy and Dane's faces. Another speed run as Robbie is trying to get it just right. Cam, we heard from Tess in terms of the optimal speed, but what about the mental preparation at this point with these speed runs? The last minute boost of confidence of knowing you have it right. How big of a factor is that? It's a huge factor. One thing, Joe, I noticed is I saw the wheelies Robbie was riding. He actually got a nose wheelie as well. Mentally, it shows you that he's tuned in, he's feeling loose, he's feeling like he's in the zone. If he's willing to work with the motorcycle, pseudo playing around, it seems like he's more tuned in and ready to go. So if you saw him doing speed runs and he had that worried look, it would, it would worry me, but seeing him loose and playing around. A feat that only boyish imagination.